Hi everyone, welcome back to Maniac Math with Mrs. Carell. Make sure you put your name on your paper and where it says video number, write 5.3.4. Sure, you've probably seen this before. Word form and expanded form. Well, let's refresh our memory as to what those things are. Word form, like you see here, is just using words to write the number instead of just writing the number. Expanded form, well, that's just a fancy way of writing the number using each place value, or another way of saying it, stretching out the number using zeros. The number 532. Notice I did not say the word and because there is no decimal in there yet. The word and we reserve only when we have a decimal. Oh, look, there's an and. The word and lets us know, hey, there's a decimal coming. 532 and 5 tenths. 532 5 tenths. So when we add all of those things together, we get 532 and 5 tenths. Let's try out some examples. Here we have 74 and 8 tenths. This is our word form. This is how we write it in standard form. And standard form just means the way you'd normally write a number. But how about expanded form? What does that look like? Well, we're going to take this 7, which is really worth 70 because it is 7 tens, because it's 7 in the tens place, 70. Notice, notice how I brought it down and I put zeros for the other places. And actually, I have an extra zero, but that's okay. What do you think I'm going to do for the 4? Look at that. I brought the 4 straight down and I put zeros for the other places. What about that 8 though? That could be tricky. You'll notice I brought the 8 and its decimal straight down, put a 0 in the front just to let me know, hey, there's a decimal coming. And there you go. We have 70 plus 4 plus 8 tenths. That's how we would write 74 and 8 tenths in expanded form. 70 plus 4 plus 8 tenths. So now for our next example. Here we have 98 written in word form and in standard form. 98 and, remember and is our decimal, tells us that we're going to have numbers after the decimal. 98 and 17 hundredths, 17 tenths hundredths, ends in the hundredths place. 98 and 17 hundredths. How are we going to write that in expanded form though? Remember what I said in the last slide, take that 9, drop it straight down, and put zeros in the rest of the spaces, but don't forget your decimal. 9, nothing but zeros, and a decimal in the same place. So these numbers here are ones, tenths, and hundredths, all just got transformed into zeros. Now we need to take the next number, the 8, and drop it straight down along with the decimal and fill in the other two spaces with zeros. What do you think we're going to do with this 1 and the 7 though? That could be a little tricky. Take a guess. Did you get this? We're dropping the 1 straight down by itself, not with the 7. And we're putting zeros in our other spaces. Now what do you think happens with the 7? If you said this, you're correct. So how we write that in expanded form is going to be 90 plus 8 plus 1 tenth, or in this case we have 10 hundredths written, but remember you can add a zero to the end of a decimal and it doesn't make any difference, and 7 hundredths. 90 plus 8 plus a tenth plus 7 hundredths. 98 and 17 hundredths. We are on problem number one. We have the green box. Remember anything in the green box here, you're responsible for writing on your paper. Here we go. We have the number 24 and 9 tenths. Can you write 24 and 9 tenths on your paper? You don't have to draw the lines. Just write 24 and 9 tenths. 
Don't worry too much about spelling. Do your best. And then over here, what do you think you should fill in here? Remember how we did drop the first number down and made zeros out of everything else and make sure you drop your decimal down. Then pull down the next number, which in this case is a four and the decimal and make sure you have a zero. Whoops, went too far. There we go, back to where I need to be. Pull the four down with the decimal and a zero and then pull down the decimal and this number right here. Give that a shot, I bet you can do it. All right, number two, we have an eight and seven hundredths. Go ahead and fill this in how you think it should be. You're using this little area here to help you figure out what goes up there. But I gave you a little bit of a hint and you always have the example. You can always go back if you need to write down the problem eight and seven hundredths. How would you write it in word form? How would you write it in expanded form? All right, and number three, we have five and, hmm, how do you say this? It's 42, but what is it? How would you write that in word form? We have five and, did you guess this was 42 hundredths? How do you write 42 hundredths? and see what you can do about filling this part in. I didn't put the decimal in for you this time. Let's see what you can do. Drop down the numbers. Make sure you drop down the decimal every single time. Okay, this one is a little bit different. Nine and 64 hundredths. I gave it to you in word form. Can you write it in standard form down here? Remember, that's just how we write the number. And then can you write it in expanded form over here? Nine and 64 hundredths. If you can write it here first, that'll help you when you drop down the numbers and you'll know what to put up here. And one more, this is number five, 37 and three hundredths. Three hundredths, just three in the hundredths. Write it in standard form and then write it in expanded form over here. Now there is another way of writing things in expanded form, and I know this looks really scary up here, doesn't it? Believe me, even as a teacher, when I first see this, I kind of go, oh, wait, what is this? But once you calm down and say, oh, okay, I can figure this out. First of all, I know I need to do parentheses first. Remember, we talked about that in class the other day. Well, three times anything. Do you remember the last video? 10 times Mrs. Corral just gives you a 10 Mrs. Corrals. Well, the same thing with this. Three times a 10th just gives you three tenths. And we're gonna add them all together just like you would add all 10 Mrs. Corrals together. There we go. But we have another way we can write that. We can write it three tenths or in decimals, we could write 0.3, which is three tenths. So we've done that. Let's do this one. Seven times one hundredth. That would be seven little hundredths. Or we could just write seven hundredths. Or in decimals, we write this. Decimal zero seven. So since the number seven ends in the hundredths column, we say seven hundredths. Done with that. And over here we have eight thousandths. Well, instead of writing eight teeny tiny little one thousandths, we're just going to write eight thousandths. And how we write that in decimals? Decimal zero zero eight, because this is the thousandths column here. So we need that number eight to end in the thousandths column. And now we've used this. Before, well, we don't really have to do anything to it, but we're going to drop it down here and look. We have this because we had to drop those plus signs down because we haven't used them. Now we can do this. Four plus three tenths 
plus seven tenths, or seven hundredths, plus eight thousandths. Four and three tenths and seven hundredths and eight thousandths. So this is just a different way of writing things in expanded form. It's not that difficult. You just have to look at it, take a deep breath and say, I can do this. All right, now for some examples. We have five plus six times one one hundredth plus nine times one one thousandth. Oh my gosh. Wait, take a breath. I can do this. Six times one one hundredth. I can write six tiny little one one hundredths and add them all together, but I know I'm going to come up with six hundredths. Done with that. How about nine times a thousandth? I could write nine times nine tiny little one one thousandths and add them all together, but I would get nine thousandths. And that's a comment, not a decimal. And I'm done with that. The only thing I haven't used is the two plus signs and the five. So now I have five plus six hundredths plus nine thousandths. All right. Five and six hundredths. Wait, this is the tenths place right here. The hundredths place is there. The nine thousandths is here. We need to put a zero there as a placeholder to let us know. This is six hundredths. If I put it here, it would be six tenths, and that's not what this says. How about this one right here? We have eight plus five times a thousandth. All right, well, I could write five teeny tiny little one one thousandths and add them all together, but we would just come up with five thousandths. And a little comma right there. There we go. I'm done with this. I did everything inside of the parentheses. The only thing that is left is eight plus. All right. Well, eight, this is a whole number. And we have a thousandth, so we need a decimal, but where's the thousandths place again? Let's see, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Oh, this is where the five needs to go. What do you think needs to go here? Have to have those zero placeholders, eight and five thousandths. All right, now we get to do it for ourselves. We have four, a whole number, four, and then we have five tenths. Let's see, how would we write that? Five times what? Five times a tenth gives me five tenths. How about this guy? It's in the hundreds place and it's only one of them. We need to have one times what? One hundredth. There we go. Same thing. How about this one? See if you can do it before I do. You can always pause the video, you know. Nine plus, oh, we have zero in the tenths column. Do we really need to do zero times a tenth? No, that would just be zero. Let's move on to this. We have nine in the hundredths column. Nine times a hundredth. There we go, and done. For problem number six, and this is hoping that I didn't accidentally skip number five. For problem number six, I want you to do this one on your own. Pay attention to the fact that this is a thousandth. What might need to be different? See if you can figure this one out on your own. Remember, you have examples on the last little bits of the video that we just looked at. Give it a shot. Here you go. Problem number seven. We have two plus. Parentheses four times one tenth plus parentheses seven times one one hundredth plus parentheses two times a thousandth. Give that one a shot. Remember eight, we have ten plus six plus one times a hundredth plus five times a thousandth. How do you think that one would go? Look at this. We have some whole numbers that are already in expanded form. How would you write them together? Okay, big challenge here. Can you write this in expanded form like we've been doing? Remember, you have examples a couple minutes back. Don't be afraid to use it. 
Okay, and last one. Nine and five hundred three thousandths. How would you write that in expanded form like we've been doing? You got this. Don't be afraid to use those examples.